the Mets. Me. Lots of cracks uh, on the Mets uh, win the ball game. Out of sight. <laughs> Listening to the Shane Sons Podcast with your host, Keith and Keyshawn Diaz. Que lo que que la que hay, mi gente, mi gente, mi gente. We are back with another prospect video with my man Edge. What's going on, brother? What up, what up, what up? What's going on, what's going on? You know I'm here. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting, very interesting today about these uh, young kids. But, uh, you know, some good things, some bad things, but we'll get into it. Yes, sir. And as you all know, we are going to be talking about Luis Angel Acuna. Shout out to baby brother who can't be here, but he will be here for the next one. Um, you know what? Let's just jump right into it. I'm going to give you guys the Baseball America breakdown about Luis Angel Acuna. But if you guys do not remember, we acquired this prospect when we traded Max Scherzer to the Texas Rangers for Luis Angel Acuna which was an interesting trade at the time. A lot of Mets fans did not expect us to kind of so-so blow it up, I guess, or whatnot, or kind of retool and rethink the farm system. But at the time of the trade, Edge, just your initial thoughts. Were you in favor of it or were you against it? And just overall motions at that time. Well, uh, you know, where the Mets were going at that time, um, basically they, they had to make a decision, okay? So they had to fake contend or they had to, you know, get a return on their investment. So, you know, I agree with what Cohen and Epler at the time actually did. Um, they basically sold the older you know, vets for prospects that they need to replenish in the system. Um, they, they did very well. They, I'm not even going to lie to you. They did very well. They got, I thought so too. They got uh, prospects that I thought they had no chance of getting. Mm -hmm. um obviously gilbert obviously you know uh, clifford uh they did go to the texas rangers with the cunha uh one of their you know top three prospects at the time um so i think they did very well uh for what you know for what the actual you know circumstance actually called for so um a top three prospect for a, a 40 year old hey i'll take that anytime when, the, when they're not going anywhere so right. Um, I don't like fake contention or double down on being wrong. So, you know, the, the front office did what they had to do, and I totally agree with them. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree as well. I thought it was a slam dunk at the time, especially for a guy like Epler. I was like, whoa. So kudos to them. But here we are now setting up with this brand new farm system, breaking down all these kids. And this is why you're here. You know what I'm saying? Love the fact you have a knowledge for these kids. And we're going to jump right into it. So if you guys don't remember our grading system. We're going to go revert right back to that. If you don't understand what we're about to, you know, break down with the hit tools, power tools, run tools, check that video out. But I'm going to get right into it. As you can see right over here, Luis Angel Acuna is a second baseman and shortstop. Hit uh, grade is a 50, power grade 40. He's a little guy. Run grade 60, fielding grade 60, arm grade 60. His overall grade turns out to be a 50. His risk is medium. Um, from Venezuela. He is uh, 5'8 and 181 pounds. Sure guy. Another one. Kind of similar size of Jet Williams, but not Jet Williams. So real quick, I'm going to just, you know, breeze through this. Uh, his track record, uh, he signed with the Texas Rangers in 2018. Uh, he, you know, same same summer that his older brother, Ronald Acuna Jr., was building his National League Rookie of the Year credentials with the Braves. The Acuna brothers are study in contrast. Ronald is a powerful outfielder, while Luis Angel is a small and stature middle infielder. Remember that. Both are now NL East rivals. Luis Angel is in the midst of double-A breakout in 2023 when Texas dealt him to the Mets for Max Scherzer, plus $35 million at the deadline, like we just mentioned. Scouting report, Acuna is a plus runner, standout defender, who has strong bat-to-ball uh, bat skills and has good hand-eye coordination, likes to swing the bat and will extend Ban the zone early, but fights off pitches with two strikes and takes his share of walks. Acuna is strong, twitchy, with more raw power than his five-foot aim frame. Suggests he hits the ball hard, but on the ground and the other way frequently, capping his projected home run totals as below average. He is a least he is at least a plus runner who was successful on 58 of 67 stolen base attempts, which is pretty awesome. 
and has swiped at least 40 bags in each full season. Cunha has a strong range, solid feet, clean actions, and plus arm at both middle infield positions. The future, uh, Acuna could develop into a standard defensive second baseman whose on-base ability, speed, could lengthen the lineup. Uh, pretty much bottom of the order kind of guy. Uh, on a first division club, he might fit best as a second table setter at the bottom of the order. Uh, after a full double A season, he's ready for AAA and his MLB debut at some time in 2024. Your thoughts, my friend. Okay. So, you know, this is an individual that I have spoken to you about, you know, in spaces, uh, Twitter spaces, you know, with other, you know, baseball minds for the most part. Mm -hmm. I'm not an Acuna guy. I, I am not an Acuna guy because um, to me, he's like a specialist. Okay. He's basically like a, a great defensive player, you know, middle infielder. Great. Okay. Um, his speed is, you know, transcendent. I'm not even going to lie to you. He can mm. steal a bag. He can uh, like, like no other, but getting on base and mm. actually, you know, catering to what the lineup needs. Mm -hmm. He needs to mature in that. Mm. I understand that you're a fast guy and you can, you know, steal bases, but how much you're going to get on base in the major leagues is going to warrant your value in the major leagues. Okay. Mm. So that's why, you know, shout out to David Stearns, you know, with his press conference and, uh, you know, the things that he said about Acuna, he needs some more seasoning because his plate discipline and other things on the offensive side needs work. Defensively, he can come up here and possibly be, you know, a gold glove type of dude, you know, mm -hmm. from both divisions. I'm not even going to lie, but how much offense he's going to give you, even at the bottom of the lineup, is going to be an issue. So mm -hmm. um, I that uh, projection, that ETA projection is actually a little bit, you know, too soon for me. And especially with how the front office actually view this guy right off the rip, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, at least one more year of showing the – the club that you got traded to that you could actually, you know, be consistent, you know, offensively, not defensively, mm -hmm. offensively, because that's the main thing. Um, he David Stearns likes defense. He knows the kid can play defense. He knows he can steal bases. He can have some type of impact, but that impact is going to be a little bit kind of bottled if he can't get on base or, you know, get proper hits uh, to warrant him being up in the major league club here. So, um, I compare him to a Luis Castillo type of dude, you know, speed guy. I know, I know, I uh, uh, heard uh, comparisons of Juan Pierre. Juan Pierre was a better offen uh, on offensive dude than him because he was all contact. Acuna, mm -hmm. a little bit, he strikes out a little bit for his size as well. So that's why he needs to work on things. But um, I like his speed aspect of his game because that's what the Mets don't have on this fucking roster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speed. The Mets need speed. They need a table setter or two. He is that. But obviously he's blocked by two positions that he plays naturally. And once again, the position plays into, you know, where he's going to be. So you have McNeil, you have Lindor. Is he going to move to the outfield, you know, as a center fielder? Because he's had that athleticism. Cool. Um, I don't see him nowhere else in this lineup uh, going forward in the future. And if you do have those two individuals, which is an all-star shortstop um, and Lindor and also an all-star second baseman that you sign or you re-sign, you know, I don't know where he's going to play unless it's the outfield. And if he goes to the outfield, he would, he would basically have to play a new position that he has not played. And that's going to probably, you know, push him back a little bit more too. So um, I, I, if you give me an honest assessment where in the future – Acuna is going to be in the Met organization. I, I'm going to just say he's not going to be in the Met organization. At the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, 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 look, for all the other prospects that the Mets have, I think he's like the has the most work to do at this point in time because I know the name is what it is, and everyone you know sees that name. And his brother just won the MVP. Mm -hmm. He is not his brother. And the comparisons needs to, you know, not warrant him. It is, it is doing a disservice for him if he actually takes it to that extent. But he is not a power guy like his brother. He is not a – he has the same amount of – he has better speed than Ronald, but he is not him. All right? right? He needs Which is one. a tall order for anybody. Yeah, you know, to be tall, fair. very tall order. Yeah. I mean, 
we've talked about it quite a lot where, you know, the question I always pose to people is if his last name was Robles, what would be the initial thought process? You know, what would you think of him if you just sat there and said, oh, his last name isn't Acuna and I'm going to watch what this kid can or can't be? Will you be like putting him in the top 10 of a lot of scouts lists? And I don't nope. think so. He will be Dilson Herrera, my man. I was waiting for the Dilson I know that Herrera. age is crazy, but he look, if you look at Dilson Herrera's, you know, past history as a prospect, it's the same exact thing with the Cunha, but a little bit more power potential that's there. He can mm. steal bases, he, he's a good defensive player, you know, uh is depending on the impact. It's, it's, it's almost similar, you know. Mm. So, um, you know, I know everyone wants him to be Ronald because he has that last name, but, you know, we got to temper our ex- expectations right. of a lot of these prospects. I'll continue to say it from the cows come home. Ah, name is not everything. Yeah. And, you know, projections is everything, you know, especially when it comes to analytics. So, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, for me, it's like, you know, in terms of, like, his hit tools, like, I don't know why, like, Small guys come to mind, like Tony Womack, Fernando no, Vina, kind of guys. You know those those little frame kind of dudes. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know if his strength really comes into play in major league ballparks. I, I think it's going to be a little tough for him. Um, yep. But I do think though, if he see for me, like if I had to give him a ceiling or I have to give him a goal to be anything. You know, because of his defensive wizardry that, you know, you hear so much about, I would probably say, you know, he can be a lot like, you know, Hassan Kim in San Diego, you know, that sort of defensive sort of style kind of player. And I I, I don't know if we're going to be expecting a lot of offense from the guy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it, it seems like it's an easy trap to fall for with the Ronald stuff. You know what I'm saying? And he does have a similar swing, but... He's a smaller guy, you know. There's just a total difference in body frame. There's a total difference in approach. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. has made significant improvements almost every single season. Uh, like there, it's very difficult to to kind of find a year where he goes backwards, even after tearing his ACL. So, you know, I, I'm rooting for the kid. I mean, if anything, I want him to improve. Where we can maybe talk about getting another player on board or. Who, who knows? You know what? Maybe he pushes the needle. I, I genuinely don't know. I, I can't really predict the future for him, but I will say that there's healthy competition throughout the ranks of the New York Mets. And I think that for him to find his footing is a very important piece of the puzzle for David Stearns, because even if it's not here, his presence alone, because, you know, the owner pretty much invested a lot of money into this specific prospect mm-hmm. at the time, not knowing you know, what the next three, four months are going to unveil for us, especially an offseason under a new president. But in my personal opinion, that that money that was invested into this man will absolutely tell you a lot of what's going to come of it because it could lead into something totally different. It may not even lead to him being called up or it may lead to him having maybe more patience with him than others. We don't know, honestly. But money is usually the end all be all in a lot of stories, as you know. Um I know you got your uh, your prospect breakdown list in front of you. You want to talk about it with Acuna again? Well, you know, uh, we have different lists with different things. You know, I'm not a Baseball America guy. Absolutely. Um, no worries. <laughs> the, website, the website that I use is Prospect 1500. Okay. They break down a, l- a little bit more, uh, you know, simple, you know, aspects. And I, they went away from the grading system. They actually have the tiered system. Um, they have actually you prefer um, you prefer much more. Yeah, I prefer the tier system, not the actual grading mm-hmm. of prospects, because it will make things a little bit more simpler to understand. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Baseball America, like we did in the video in the past, you know, uh, is a little bit more complicated when you talk about numbers, you know, putting it in front of prospects. So I, I like this website for because it's tiered. And right now that they have the Mets uh, Acuna on a tier two system, not an all-star, not a, you know, just a good player that can contribute to a good team. If, you know, you know, if you put them out there. Right. Okay. So um, once again, you know, they basically have the similar, you know, uh, thoughts like what I have with him. He has a lot of, and also David Stearns too. Uh, He has a lot of work. 
Um, mm -hmm. He has a lot of, you know, uh, work with, you know, plate discipline that needs to be addressed. And they think that he could be a contributor mm -hmm. in the right situation. But the, with the Mets having a, a glut of prospects and, you know, the minor leagues and this playing the same position, they think that he's going to be on the short end of the stick side. And I totally agree with that. And um, it's up to Acuna to evolve himself into a player that the Mets going to actually want to keep at this end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I know the Mets are going to keep him now because they, like you said, Keith, they basically paid all that money for him. They, right. they were basically $30 million for a prospect. If mm -hmm. you want to put it that way for money wise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they paid Crazy. all the money for him. They're going to give him, they're going to give him every opportunity. But once again, this is, this is not, you know, uh, my opinions are mine. Um, I still think that he will be used for a Met need later down in the line. He may get a cup of coffee, you know, in the in the majors uh, <laughs> at the time, uh, you know, and see what he could do. But um, if he really doesn't show, he's probably going to get moved in a bigger package for someone else, uh, either a pitcher, you know, uh, you know, uh, offensive player, you know, things like that. So. Um, I want the kid to be here. I, I like having an Acuna because of mm -hmm. the name, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just to go back and forth with the Braves fans and everything. <laughs> so, um, you know, I like I like having an Acuna, okay? But um, it's like having – when we had Kazuo Masui, you oh, know. Boy. And, uh, oh, boy. We had the other Masui across the road, across, but, you know, we had our own Matsui and things like that. We all that. know how that turned out. <laughs> you know, I, I got to go from the blast from the past, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think, you know – if he shows himself mm -hmm. to be warranted as the dude that the Mets actually value and giving up the money that mm -hmm. they gave up to get him, he will be here in some mm -hmm. type of capacity. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be in a starting role, but he might be be a, a bench dude that can, you know, contribute like a like a a Dave Roberts pinch pinch running type of dude, you know, in big spots, you know, things like that. You know, That's in a, a world great world. One. I like that. And so I, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's like um, so set in stone being in the lineup when he does come here. He will get an opportunity, but it, it will, it will basically diminish quickly if he doesn't show himself. So right, yeah, I, especially when you invest thirty million dollars. You, you did see him, and you did see him play, right? right? Yeah, right. I, I went to two Rumble Pony games last year, and I was, you know pleasantly shocked by the size i was um <laughs> like whoa he is a lot smaller than i thought i mean to be fair though uh jeremiah jackson uh jet williams him and i think yeah gilbert they're all we had a lot of small kids in the a, lot, a lot of a lot of small guys a lot yeah, i mean i i don't know if that was like like predetermined by the organization or it just happened that way but yeah, no, i mean when you get i actually got to see ryan clifford and we'll, we'll eventually talk about him and i was like whoa I was like, whoa, that is a big kid, you know. So yeah, you see, big like, boy. yeah, you see something with him. He's a big boy. Yeah, uh, the thing, see, I, you said it earlier, Luis Castillo. If he could be, if he could model anything, and you know, obviously, my fans, we all know the Luis Castillo thing. But if he can do anything like Luis Castillo, I, he'll be in the major leagues for a bunch of different ball clubs, last a very long time. And fine footing. And like you said, Dave Roberts was in the league for God knows how many years, just stealing bases, getting on base. And, you know, David Stearns was very clear. He needs to understand the strike zone. And, you know, personally, it I think the mature thing is very on point with him. I think it's a very accurate statement. I hate to do the judging a book by its cover, but, you know, I follow him on Instagram and you see certain things and you're like, OK, you know, I know he's a kid. I get it. I was there. But, you know, there's a lot that comes with it, especially his family name, you know. So I tend to look at it like, you know, for his sake, if he can get to at least a Luis Castillo level, he will he will be a, he will have a fine MLB career. If he falls into the, the Dilson Herrera situation, uh, he'll be in like the Mexican League and God knows how long, you know, and th that I don't want that for the kid because it, it also ties to the Mets. But um Another thing, too, before we, you know, wrap up and I give you the floor, uh, Texas had him as a really high prospect, but he was he was blocked. He was yeah. never, ever going to get playing time there. And he went from a block situation to another block situation. So 
maybe this isn't his home the same way it wasn't his home in Texas, you know? Well, you know, once again, once again, he was a very high prospect uh, to me because of name, mm -hmm. um, because of what his brother did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only thing that I'm going to be a little bit cautious with, with Acuna, bro, is Acuna, Acuna basically, you know, acting like his brother or want to yeah. be like his brother. That's where I get the yeah. immaturity. And, and, and when he, look, if you really look at his at-bats and the swing path and and just the type of swings that he takes, he he wants to hit for power, but he is not capable of doing it consistently, bro. Mm. And to me, that's basically wanting to be your brother, your MVP brother in a smaller five inch, you know, five frame. inch, you know, type of frame, yeah. less, you know, lesser frame. And you are not that. I need him to understand, and this is the maturity side of things, mm -hmm. that you are not your brother mm -hmm. and you need to stay within yourself to be the best player that you can be. Not mm -hmm. what your brother is, but what you can be. If you're mm -hmm. a speed guy, defensive dude, you know, be that. Don't be this powered guy that you're not. And especially if you're going to be in City Field, which is mm -hmm. not a, a, a bandbox. It is mm -hmm. not, you know, the Rumble Pony, you know, mm -hmm. Field or even Brooklyn or any of these ballparks that you've basically been in. Right. You know, since you've been in the major leagues mm -hmm. or major league player, you are not that. Stay within yourself. But I, to me, I don't think he can do it at this time because the temperament is basically always going to go back to being – Ronald Acuna rather right. than, you know, Luis Angel Acuna. So, you know, we'll get a good taste of it if he's able to, you know, it's weird because we always judge the double A, you know, grades and how guys do double A's, but I actually want to see him in triple A because yeah. he's going to be around major leaguers that right. want to get back called up. So being in that sort of atmosphere, you know, there's a lot of failed guys there. There's a lot of guys who have never gotten a shot, guys who got a short end of the stick, a cup of coffee, that range, if he can excel away from that group of players, then maybe that growth that we're talking about, it can really stand down. The Mets can sit here and say, let's pull Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But that's Luis Angel Acuna, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for joining us in this video. We have a lot more. Any final words, Edge? Um, You know, once again, uh, I'm not no expert. Uh, but I do, you know, watch these, you know, uh, prospects in a, in a microcosm, if you want to basically put it out there. Um, you know, it, it just temper your enthusiasms a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes prospects are 50-50. Mm -hmm. You know who's good or who's not. And, you know, you just have to have some patience. Once again, I'm always going to preach patience with these prospects. And, you know, once you understand their capability, you'll understand what myself, Keith, uh, you know, Key, you know, other other uh, content creators uh, you know, is talking about with these actual prospects. So um, just just be, you know, just give them a chance. Give them a chance to to, to fail. And then <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll get the understanding of, you know, who they are for the most part. So uh, with that, I appreciate you, Keith. No, nah, anytime, all. brother. Anytime, my brother. And, you know, this identity crisis, hopefully he figures it out. You know, is he sure. Luis Angel Acuna or is he Ronald, baby Ronald? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Anyway, sure. you know, yeah, let's figure it out. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, shoot us a follow, shoot us all that good stuff. You can find Edge in the description below on Twitter. You can talk ball with him all you want. Any sport, he loves to welcome ball talk. Logical ball talk, don't forget. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we are out. Let's fucking go, Matt. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. And stay tuned for the next episode.